Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Unique Sikorsky helicopter makes first flight. The second Spaceship 2 in on its gear. Colorado judge rules on airplane noise case. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 26, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Innovation in vertical lift flight took place as Sikorsky Aircraft announced the first successful flight of their S-97 Raider helicopter. This unique machine features a rigid coaxial rotor prototype designed to demonstrate a game-changing combination of maneuverability, hoverability, range, speed, endurance, and survivability. During the first test flight, which lasted approximately an hour, it performed a series of maneuvers designed to test the aircraft's hover and low-speed capability. With the first flight achieved, the Raider helicopter now moves into more progressive flight testing to demonstrate key performance parameters critical to future combat operations, including armed reconnaissance, light assault, light attack, and special operations. Based on the X-2 coaxial rotor design, the Raider helicopter is capable of being developed into a unique multi-mission configuration that is able to carry six troops and external weapons. The coaxial counter-rotating main rotors and pusher propeller are expected to provide cruise speeds up to 240 knots. The program is 100% industry funded by Sikorsky Aircraft and its 53 industry partners. Virgin Galactic reported last week that the second Spaceship 2 had been lowered onto its landing gear in a hangar in California. The spacecraft intended to carry paying passengers on suborbital flights was already in development when a tragic accident resulted in the destruction of the first Spaceship 2 on October 31st last year during a powered test flight. On November 7th last year, Virgin Galactic CEO George Whitesides wrote that, quote, the second Spaceship 2 is already two-thirds complete, and our teams are pouring themselves into that project with heightened resolve. Our will is indefatigable, and our team is determined." End quote. Ground testing of the new spacecraft could begin sometime this year, but the timeline has not been updated recently. After the break, skydiving operation rolled not too noisy. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. In a report issued on Airborne Unlimited earlier this month, we told you the story of a concern for aircraft noise in Longmont, Colorado. The complaints came from a small but vocal group of citizens that had formed together calling themselves Citizens for Quiet Skies. Their complaint was that a local skydiving operation, known as the Mile High Skydiving Center, was creating excessive noise as their twin otter aircraft transversed near residential areas. Boulder District Court Judge Judith Labuda visited the noise complaint location to hear for herself just how much noise they were talking about. At that time, a local reporter said that the noise level was unremarkable. In a 13-page ruling last week, the judge denied every claim brought by the plaintiffs against Mile High Skydiving. According to a report, the basis for the ruling rests on the foundation in federal laws and regulations regarding airplane noise. As expected, no evidence was found that violations had taken place. While it is anticipated that further court action may take place, Mile High Skydiving will continue its operation, and they have assured the community that it is their intention to be good neighbors. It is nice to see the good guys win one of these. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. Music 
This weekend, we find the Navy Blue Angels on the East Coast, while the Air Force Thunderbirds are dusting off the Rocky Mountains. The Rhode Island National Guard Open House and Air Show takes off on May 30th and 31st in North Kingston, Rhode Island at the Quonset State Airport. The Navy Blue Angels and the Canadian Forces Snowbirds will both perform at this major event, along with numerous other air show acts. On May 29th through the 31st, you can find the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds performing in the Rocky Mountain Air Show in Aurora, Colorado. The commemorative Air Force will be there along with other well-known air show performers. May 30th marks the Aviation Heritage Fly-In at the Huntsville, Alabama Executive Airport, which is commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. The Save Our Flying Heritage Veterans Organization is sponsoring the fly-in and static display. The Army Aviation Heritage Foundation will be providing rides in a UH-1 Huey and an AH-1 Cobra helicopter for a fee. Plan ahead for June 4th when it is time to drag your tail on the beautiful grass runways of Friedman Field in Junction City, Kansas. This is the National Biplane Association fly-in that celebrates all things with two or more wings. Aircraft and pilots of all shapes and sizes welcome. After these messages, actress Anne Hathaway takes her role in Grounded seriously. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Actress Anne Hathaway tries to get it right. She sought the assistance of airmen with the U.S. Air Force to learn about her role in the play Grounded. The play focuses on a female aviator who flies remotely piloted aircraft. A pilot with the Royal Australian Air Force made history earlier this month by flying the first RAAF F-35A Lightning II sortie at Luke Air Force Base. RAAF Major Andrew Jackson was the first Australian pilot to fly the fifth generation fighter. Security company founder Chris Roberts is being investigated by the FBI for his claim that he hacked into an airliner's flight control system. Now it's learned, he claims to have also hacked into the controls of the International Space Station. The Illinois Department of Transportation Division of Aeronautics has chosen DuPage Airport as the 2015 Illinois Reliever Airport of the Year. The award is given to an outstanding airport designed to serve general and corporate aviation in large metropolitan areas. An AUVSI roadshow was held in Bismarck, North Dakota last week. Speakers say UAVs could be used for agriculture, inspection, archaeology, and many other imaginative ways in this region of the country. RDO Engineering demonstrated the SenseFly EB drone. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Just when you think you've seen and pre-ordered the coolest of all UAVs, another one shows up on a funding website. This new UAV is targeted at hikers and other outdoor enthusiasts with its unusual design and portability. Photographers and other professionals are also potential customers, according to the developer Ascent Aerosystems. The Sprite UAV is a cylindrical aircraft with two counter-rotating props at the top of the aircraft and an integrated camera at its base. Its normal attitude in flight is vertical, with the camera pointed at the ground. The Sprite props fold next to the body's aircraft 
to facilitate ease in transporting. It is controlled via a tablet device or smartphone, and flight plans can be pre-programmed or it can be flown by hand. It is advertised as being FPV ready. The aircraft is said to be waterproof. It can orbit objects while keeping the camera on a two-axis gimbal trained on an object. There is also a follow me mode as well. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.